what I realize about California is there's this Hollywood spirit out here. I'm from New York originally. There's a very Hollywood pretend you're, yeah. you're dealing with, not dealing with issues, and, and walk around and be fake spirit in this place. Let's keep the image of everything's all right. And that ain't godly. That's the mindset of a congregating Christian. A Christian comes and they pretend everything's all right. But everybody in their house is, is disagreeing with them, fighting with them. They really need help. But as long as they can hold together on the surface, they think they're godly. With my spirit, I'm watching the time close. Give me fruits with the spirit, no iPhone. I'm going to shine when I do with my eyes closed. They can't see my crown, but it's mine, though. No more chances. Can't be lukewarm, got to pick a side. Pick a side. Who am I? I can go through the We're going to talk about the difference between a repenting Israelite and a Christian congregant, right? Are those the same thing? Yes or no? Let me just see by a show of hands. Are they the same thing or different? The difference between a Christian congregant and a repenting Israelite. What's the difference? Anybody know? Anybody got a thought? All right. Give you a mic. Dan, look at who's shot. He got a mic, man. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Most high uh, Christ boy. So I would say there's a difference because uh, a, a Christian, they're still between the churches and they don't understand the laws. They don't know the laws. But at least a repentant Israelite, they're, in the, um, they're understanding the laws and trying to live in accordance with the laws and the, uh, the commandments. Okay. All right. That's a fundamental difference. There's more to it. What else? Go ahead. Uh, shalom. Uh, for a repentant Israelite to repent, you actually have to turn away from your sins, whereas the people in church just sin, go to church, act like it's all good, and go back to sinning again. There's Israelites that do that too, but all right. Damn. Some Israelites are asleep. All right. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll jump into it. Second Peter chapter 3. You're not wrong, though. They got to change their behavior. Second Peter chapter 3. Those are good. There's a key thing that y'all are missing, uh, but we'll go through it today. Second Peter chapter 3. I don't know if I'm going to use any of my notes, you know. I got Officer Yasadi here. He might trigger me to go down a whole different path. Might get dark. Second Peter 3 and verse 1. Start from there. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. So the whole goal of Peter in writing this letter, the second letter that he wrote to them, was to stir up their minds and put them in remembrance of what they needed to do. Go ahead. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. When he was putting them in remembrance of what was given, he was also putting in remembrance of the promises, what they were supposed to be doing, what their purpose was in life. A lot of time when you look at the difference between a repentant Israelite and a Christian, they don't know that biblical purpose. Right. Like they come here. Uh, you might dress nice. You might have the fringes on. But what is the goal right, as far as it relates to God. Christians don't have that goal. They're like, we're going to get money, we're going to build the church up, right, we're going to get rich, and I don't know, we're going to serve the Father, we're going to dance and sing. Like, there's an end goal in the Bible, right? Read Romans 15 and verse 4. There's an end goal in the Bible. I think uh, no, one, no one touched that, right, when I asked you what's the difference. There's an end goal in the Bible. The Bible has a, a point of no return for Christianity for everyone who's against what the Lord said. So that's the difference, right? It's a major difference. Romans 15 and verse 4, watch. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope, right? There was something that the people, when they read the Bible and they were put in remembrance, they were being given hope towards something. It wasn't just let's read the Bible every Sunday and clap and sing. And then on Monday we go back to work and we got hope that we're going to get to work for another 40 years. That wasn't what it was about. That's what a lot of us got in our mind when it comes to this Bible. We're just going to do what the Bible says, and we're going to get to stay here in Babylon the Great for the rest of our life. When you're in Christianity, you have no goal. You have no purpose, right? You're just here. You're just living life. So you go to church. You come home. You go sin. You do the same thing over. There's no end goal. The Scripture just said we had hope in something, right? Go back to um, 2 Peter chapter 3, chapter 3 and verse 1. We got 2. Read verse 2. Verse 2. 
that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets yep. and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Read. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. So, so hold on, wait, wait, wait. Christians talk about the last days, but do they give you details on what the last days is going to look like? Because the purpose of this book is to tell you what? This letter, he's telling you there's going to be last days. That means there's an end. He's prepping you for it. He's like, yo, it's, go it's not going to keep going the way that you think it is. You're not going to go to work, right, every day. When you come to work, you leave work, then you go back to work, then you leave work, then you grow, and you're like, man, I worked my whole life. I'm 80 years. I've been 80 years. I've just been working. That's never what the people believed in God for. They believed in God because there was an end to their suffering. That's why they believed in God. Christianity doesn't teach you there's an end to your suffering. They teach you, give me money, right? They teach you that there's going to be a rapture, and the people that raped and robbed and murdered you, they coming with you. That's what they tell you. But he's telling you there's going to be last days, and the people in the last days are going to do what? Walking after their own lust. There's going to be people that are contrary to what I'm teaching you. They're going to walk after their own lust. Go ahead. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? See, everybody knew there's a promise of God coming. Christians believe in one God, right? Give me that in James real quick, where it says uh, the, the devils do believe. See, I'm, I'm going to end up not going through my notes. It's a lot of stuff that I want to get through. The, the, the Christian believes that there's a last days, right? But so did the devil. The devil is saying, where's the promise of his coming? Meaning what? Even evil people know there's a judgment day, but they don't give a damn. And what they'll influence you to do is not give a damn. Read that. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe. So a Christian and a repentant Israelite, they both know there's God, but there's a difference in their mindset as it relates to that God, as it relates to that judgment, right? Go back. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep. Even, even in that verse, right, where's the promise of his coming? They don't believe that a black man's going to crack the sky, right, riding in a chariot. They believe a white man's coming back with sweet little white baby angels. And when the white baby angels come down, they're going to be, oh, sky's going to crack. This? You're going to get hugs. That's what they believe. There's no sense of urgency in the Christian church. It's just, hey, do, just keep coming here. You're going to be all right. This is your safe place. But you could come to a building as a repentant Israelite and be in the Sabbath every day and still be scheduled for death. You could still be marked for death. You could come to every single Sabbath. You could come to every new moon. You could come to every feast day. And the Lord still say, you're going to die. That's what the Israelite know versus a Christian because their minds are different. Go ahead. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God. I jump down. Give me verse 9. Verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. See, this is what he wrote to them about. There's a promise. There's a promise that the Israelites are going to rule on earth. So the Lord isn't slack concerning that, meaning that that promise is going to come to life. But think about it. Do you hear about that in church? Is that a conversation with any Christian Jehovah Witness that you know? That a black Christ is coming from the sky, there's a promise he's coming to deliver, and that is going to happen, and that we in the last days. That's not a topic of conversation. So the difference between the Israelites was Peter was always trying to make the people mindful of that. Don't just come and show up and be like, yo, I, got, yo, I went to Tuesday class, bro, they was going in. I learned some fire precepts. Then you go out there, you get your cell phone, you go straight to TikTok. Damn, she's shaking it. Hmm. You're going to die. I'm telling you, you're going to die. You came here, but a Christian, they have no uh, conscience in that matter. There's no conscience there. There's nothing in them that makes them say, I'm doing the wrong thing. Because they'll just go to church on Sunday, they'll sing Amazing Grace, and they'll be all right. Sisters might cuss their husband out or not follow what the Lord say or lust themselves. They don't feel like that's bothering them. Because in their mind, they're like, God, not going to judge me for that. I'm going to be all right. Go ahead. As some men count slackness, go ahead. but is long-suffering to us war to us word, not willing that any should perish. See, the purpose of the Lord giving us so much time is because he don't want none of us to die. He don't want any of us to perish. If it was up to him, we would all repent, get our minds right, and we would be repentant Israelites, and we wouldn't be Christian congregants. But prophecy got to be fulfilled. The word must come to pass, and there must be a nuke for that ass. <laughs> Go ahead. 
but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. If a thief is coming, you are prepping yourself. Christianity says that, but then they don't prep you. Yo, somebody about to come rob you. We know, but uh, pastor, how do I get ready? I don't know. Keep coming back here and put your ties in. You all right with me? You all right with God? Amen? Amen? You remember that, right, Nick Go ahead. <laughs> in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. He said the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. What y'all got to understand is at this time, they couldn't describe what they were seeing in visions. When Peter saw the vision, he like, yo, the heavens going to pass away. He had to write something, so when you seen it, you was like, damn, the sky going to disappear? The hell Peter talking about? Imagine getting a letter before there's any nuclear technology and he's prophesying the heavens are going to pass away. You reading it going, yo, hold up, bro. I'm going to get myself right. The man just said there ain't going to be no sky. They ain't gonna, what? The sky is falling. What do I do next? Revelation 18 and 8. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 8. Bring it out. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. So the plagues on the earth, John found out more later after Peter, and he found out that they're going to they're gonna be destroyed in an hour. And one day, Babylon going to be destroyed. So think about that. It's coming like a thief in the night. It's going to happen in one day. All the Starbucks you see, all the wicked people you got to deal with at your job, all the people that get on your nerves or you feel like they in sin, they all going to go away in a day. Y'all had a day today. Y'all tell me what y'all did this morning. Somebody tell me what you did of significance that you're going to remember tomorrow. Tell me. You're going to forget, right? So he's telling you just as quickly as that happened, America's going to be destroyed. Read again. There, I don't need you meditating on the whole class while you, while you read it. Read, bro. <laughs> Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Give me um. go back. I don't want to jump off. No, no, no. Keep reading from there. My bad. 18, I want 9 and 10. Ver he said one day first, then he continues. Go ahead. 9 and Verse 10. Verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. The other nations are going to see the smoke burning. They're going to see... America from where they are, and they're going to see smoke coming up. I don't know if anybody, uh, I don't know if y'all were alive. I'm sure a lot of y'all were alive. When the, twi when the uh, Twin Towers burned down, I was in New York City, right? I could see from the building of school the smoke coming off the building. So anytime I read the scripture, I say, it's going to be possible for you to see all America burning. What y'all don't know is underneath us right now, there's oil. It's running all through here. It's like the blood of the earth, right? The oil that's running keeps fires lit, Right? Keeps fires lit. So if, if I light oil on fire and there's a source of oil that keeps going, what's going to happen? Fire's going to keep burning. So the Lord is saying, you're going to be able to see the smoke from America forever. You're going to be in India, you're going to look up in the sky, you're going to see America burning. You're going to be in Africa, you're going to look up, you're going to see America burning. You're going to be in Europe, you're going to look up, you're going to see America burning. That's the point he's making. Everywhere. And he says it's going to happen in one day. You're going to go from chilling, right, watching your favorite American TV shows, Sitting down on the couch saying, I'm going to eat these pancakes, have me a good American breakfast, and then the nukes going to hit. And then America's going to burn forever. Read. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city oh, battle. Hold on, wait, wait. It says, alas, alas, meaning we've been waiting on this. This is what we've been waiting on. Finally. That's what alas means. Alas, finally. Go ahead. The great city Babylon, that mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. In one hour is thy judgment come. So not only is it going to be in one day, he's telling it's going to be in one hour. Shalom. Hey, bro. Hey, sis. You've been watching for a whole 15 minutes. You still ain't subscribed yet? Go ahead and hit that button down at the bottom of the page. All right, I'm going to shove my black lips. You get back to the class. Oh, sign Christ bless. You're going to be on your way to the store. You're going to come out the store. The earth going to be on fire. If you're keeping the commandments, you're going to be saved.
If you got the devil on you, well, this next article we're going to read, this is prepared for you. Let's look at it. Give me Isaiah 54 and verse 16 real quick. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Bring it out. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. So the Lord created a waster, he's talking about missiles, to destroy. Right? To destroy. Now read the article. Let's see. This is CNN. India joined select group of nations able to fire multiple warheads on a single ICBM. So, go ahead, also Explain why you said damn. Explain why you said damn. You said that because India is poor as hell, man. <laughs> you know what they got, though? What? They got a nuke. Exactly. <laughs> they got an ICBM. <laughs> poor that they ain't poor enough to blow you up. They'll blow you up. Multiple warheads on one. You got to understand, one of these warheads could blow up something the size of Texas. Right. Uno. Uno. And all I got to do is press a button. It's intercontinental. I can sit in India, press the button. Kitchen, don't come out here. They're going to come anyway. Press the call button, blow the nuke, and press the button again. That's how it's going to go down. That's why it's going to happen in an hour. Go ahead. Hey, also, and what's so crazy about it is because India... You can see the you see this prophecy because as poor as India is, like you said, they still have the capability for nukes. Just to show you that when the Lord's saying this stuff is going to happen, you can see it playing out. Destruction is going to come, no matter what. There is no ways about it around it. Esau's even trying to stop them from. I don't want to go too far off the point, but they're trying to stop uh, uh, Ishmael from making nukes. And yeah, they're Iran. Still getting Iran. The, Iran. They, but they're still developing the uh, working on developing it getting the capability working with other nations to get it. there's no way around what the lord is going to make happen. ain't no way you stopping israel from blowing or something up hell no they took a whole plane and ran it through a building you ain't stopping them ain't no way baby I, i'll blow up the plane if i got to you trying to stop me from making a nuke i got one in the basement right now that's how israel roll go ahead uh, delhi cnn India said Monday it had joined the world's top nuclear powers by mastering the ability to put multiple warheads atop a single, a single intercontinental ballistic missile. Go ahead. The successful test of multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle MIRV technology on this indige indigenously, in ingenuously. Indigenously? You good? You said it right. Oh, yes, sir. Develop Agni V. ACB, ICBM puts India in a club that includes the United States, Russia, China, France, and the United Kingdom. Neighboring Pakistan has also claimed to have MIRV technology, but experts say the claim is unverified. Praise God. Praise God. Read the scripture again. Verse this is why it's getting crazy, yo. Isaiah. Now, now, the difference between an Israelite and a Christian, a Christian reads and go, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Oh, Lord. And Israelite reads this, and then we read Isaiah 54 and 16, and let's see what it says. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and bringeth, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. He said I created it for what? To destroy. He said I created this nuclear missile to destroy. It was prophesied. So when Isaiah was saying, and when Peter's saying, I'm putting you in remembrance of what, of what we was promised, you know there was a nuke involved. I'm just going to tell you how much more I know. Because over time, the Lord opened up the understanding. That's what was happening. Go back to where we was at. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Bring it out. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. You see what he said? The earth also and the works therein shall be burned up. So you go to work, you buy your car, you pay your bills, you pay for your house, and in your mind you think this is going to last forever. A lot of us wake up every day and say America is going to last forever. But the prophets always had the mindset of this is going to be destroyed. That's what they was hoping on. When Christ came, they was hoping for everything to get destroyed. They said, Lord, destroy everything. Will you at this time? Give me Acts 1 and 6 real quick. I wanted to get this later, but I just got to read it and I'll come back to it. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. 
When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See, they said, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? They knew, read Malachi 4 and 1, they had access to these scriptures we about to read. They knew that him restoring the kingdom to Israel, they always knew the kingdom was for Israel. They knew in him doing that that this had to happen, Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. Read it For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. See, they didn't know how to describe what they were seeing in these visions. So he said there's a day coming when the earth is going to burn like an oven. Now, how many of y'all go home and get in the oven every day? Nobody go home and get in the oven because it's hot. It's hot. Nobody want to get in the oven. When you get in the sauna, you get out. You don't stay there all day because it's hot. So when the people knew that the day of the Lord was going to be like fire burning in the oven, they was like, hold up now. I got to get my mind right. There was a level of fear of God. There was a level of fear because if they asked for the Lord to restore it, then that means they think they're on the right side of God. So they're saying, you're going to destroy everything right now? Are you going to destroy it? Read Malachi 4 and 1. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So he said, everyone that is prideful is going to die. So think about reading this. You're the apostles and you know this and you still ask the Lord, hey, you, you going you gonna to destroy everything right now? I don't know how you're going to make the fire come down, but we read the scripture. You got a great waster, right? You got wicked people that you got to kill. Right? They knew Zechariah 13 and 8 when they asked this question. I'm just showing y'all. These are the things that they understood. They had the Old Testament, but they didn't know what y'all know. Zechariah 13 and 8. Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Two parts of the land was going to be cut off and they were going to die. So when they said, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of heaven? They knew people had to die. That was what the Israelites was reminding people of. Yo, people are going to die. The Lord coming back, people are going to die. Read. But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. So he didn't understand what that fire looked like. He didn't understand how it could be made. So now when we're in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, he's telling you, look, a fire is going to come. I seen it in the vision. Just like Zechariah said he saw it in the vision. Just like Malachi said he saw it in the vision. He wanted them to remember that the promise is going to come, and it's going to come by fire. Just like the prophets before me told you there's going to be an act of fire on the earth. I'm reminding you also. Give me Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. John the Baptist said the same thing. Ma I told you I'm not going to go through nothing on the paper. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That fire there is talking about literal fire. Meaning in order for you to get into the kingdom to be saved, you're going to have to see fire. That there's going to be an act of fire on the earth. John the Baptist knew it. Malachi knew it. Zechariah knew it. Now Peter, we read in 2 Peter. Peter understood it. So he kept the people in remembrance of it. Why? Right? 2 Peter 3 and 10. Read it one more time. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Mm -hmm. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Read. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in our holy conversation uh -huh. and godliness? So now we got to think about it. Peter said, knowing that the earth is going to be destroyed, what manner of person are you going to be? You know the earth is going to be destroyed. You know it's going to be burnt up, right? You know everything is going to be destroyed that you like here on earth. You know that all of your favorite toys, your car, you're not, you're not floating up in the sky with your car. You're holding it. Lord, let me get this Audi. I want to float up. You're not going with the Audi. You're not going with your favorite chain or jewelry, none of that. The Lord's going to burn up the earth, and you're just going to be happy to not be getting burned at the time. That's where your mind going to be at. You're going to be weeping and crying, saying, thank God I'm not burning down there. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You're not going to be worried about nothing here on earth. So he asked them, what type of person are you going to be? And that's the difference, right, when you look at a Christian and you look at a repentant Israelite. A repentant Israelite understands destruction is coming. So they focused on, what man of person am I going to be? 
for, uh, give me Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Watch. Start from there. Let's look at where we at as a people. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. That's I, Isaiah yeah, 1 and 2. Go ahead. I'm looking at I it. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. Before you came into the truth, this is you. The Lord brought you up. He gave you life on earth. He gave you food every single day. He gave you wisdom to not get hit by a bus every single day. And you just rebelled. You said, I know I ain't supposed to be uh, dealing with multiple women or lusting or playing the video games when my mother said no or stealing snacks out the cabinet. I don't give a damn about none of these rules. I'm going to break them. Matter of fact, we're going to mastermind as a family how to break our parents' rules. Forget honoring our father and mother. Nah, we all did this. You ain't, you ain't just the only guilty one. You think, you think I was talking about you? Okay. Yeah, see how you get cut? See how brothers get cut? That's what I'm telling you. Just talking. We all was doing that. You take, you go steal something, you put everything back perfectly. So your parents, when they come back in the room, they're like, oh, okay. Don't look like he touched nothing. You think your parents stupid, but there's God watching you. Meanwhile, God is in heaven going, wicked Negroes. Because we black. Read. The ox knoweth his owner. So the ox knows his owner who's feeding him, who's nourishing him, who's taking care of him and watching over him. Go ahead. And the ass his master's crib. The ass understands that he has a master. He has a crib that he can return to. Go ahead. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. And that's how we are in the world. We're walking around. We're not considering what the result of our action will be. So read verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. Children that are corrupted. He said, as a people, we're children that corrupt things, right? We're children that corrupt it. We like leaving metal outside and water. We like taking milk out the fridge and putting it on the counter. The hell is this? That's how he's saying we are as a people. We will corrupt things. Regardless if I give it to you good and perfect, you're going to destroy it because you're wicked. Go ahead. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faints. He said the whole what? The whole head is sick. But give me Jeremiah 2 and 21 real quick. Just came to mind. We are corruptors. Watch. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? When I got this seed, I planted it. I said, this is about to grow up and give me some grapes, and I'm going to have some fine wine after this. And then I got me some pink watermelon. The hell is going on here? This seed is corrupt. Something wrong. I don't want you know you ain't going to eat no pink watermelon. You're going to look at it, huh? Yeah, you're going to look at it and say, what's wrong with this? It's dry. It don't taste good. I thought this was grape seed that I was playing. Go back. Give me uh, Isaiah 1 and verse 4. This is how we are to the Lord. Hey, ah, Go ahead, Austin. I, hey, I, was, I, was, I just want to say, because what the officer is bringing out is really heavy. I pray y'all are really picking this up, because what did the Bible just say? What did the Bible just say? Read that scripture again. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 21. Read it out. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine. Uh -huh. Holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? What did God call us? Degenerate. I don't think y'all understood the question. What did God call you individually? Oh, now nobody wants to say it. <laughs> read that again. How oh, then art again. thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. What did God just call every single one of you right now? Degenerate. He called me degenerate. Every single one of us degenerate. That's our natural state. That's what we turned into. That's what we sought in the world. That's what we cleaved unto. That's what we were raised for however long we've been alive in this earth. We're, we have a degenerate mindset. And the thing that's important about what the officer is bringing out that I pray y'all really pick up on is the fact that the mindset that we have now, it stems from that degeneracy, and we're going to die when the Lord returns unless we correct it. That's what the author's showing us. He said, destruction coming. So what are we going to do to fix ourselves? Because our baseline is degeneracy, and we have to be able to understand that. So when we come in here, we have to humble ourselves to the Word of God and be honest and real about that.
Hey, all praises. That's, that's the point. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 4. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are, all, they are gone away backward. In order to cease the Lord's anger, right, he's going to do it with fire. Give me some rock 39. See, this ain't written down. Going off the deep end. But we got to understand, fire is how the Lord stops being angry. Said he's angry, right? So rock 39, I think I want 28. Let me look. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. Sirach chapter 39 and verse 28. Read These be spirits that are created for vengeance, uh -huh. which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. When the Lord uses these spirits, they appease him. They calm him down and say he's angry in Isaiah. So he created spirits that said, I'm angry. I need forms and methods that when I use this, I can relax. This is like the Lord's R&B songs. So you understand. You turn on your R&B, you sit down, you light the, light the candles, right? And then you relax. For the Lord, the thing that relaxes him, that appeases him is this. Read. Fire. Damn. And hell. No, 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 no. Damn. Fire. The Lord said fire appeases him. Y'all got to understand why he's going to burn the earth up. I'm frustrated. I'm mad at y'all for what y'all did. In order for me to be appeased, I got to burn the whole earth. That'll calm me down. When I see people running and screaming, right, and, and wondering, God save me, I'm going to laugh and I'm going to relax. Y'all, this Christianity don't teach you this God. They teach you a God that regardless of what you do, he's going to give you a kumbaya hug. There's no reason to fear him. This guy said, when I light the earth on fire, I'm going to relax. That's my R&B song. Go ahead. I'm trying to talk too much, officer. But Genesis 9.13, can you read that? Genesis 9.13, please read that. Because, man, that's, that's heavy, y'all. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 13. Bring it out. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Go ahead. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. You got to understand, God, God said he's going to use fire to bring destruction. But he, every time you see a rainbow in the sky, Christianity gets you thinking, oh, hey, that's just all nice and floor, fun and glorious to see. Oh, there's a leprechaun and a pot of gold the at the other this? end. God is saying, I have to put that in the sky as a reminder to hold myself back, not to drown you all to death right now. Because right. I'm pissed at y'all. We look at it, oh, it's so beautiful. God's like, no, I had to look at that not to kill y'all right now and give y'all time and be patient with y'all. But the fire is coming, just like the officer just said. That's the black Christ and the black God. Give me Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 4 again. No, I just wanted fire. I don't, I'm just, you know, thoughts. Christianity is the devil. <laughs> Isaiah. Chapter 1 and verse 4. Ah, sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Read. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Read. Why should you be stricken anymore? The Lord said, why should I keep on whooping you? Y'all ever seen one of them kids where when their parents whoop them, they laugh? They getting their behind tore up. Ha! <laughs> What you do with a kid like that? You got to send him to boot camp, right? The kid got the devil on him. He got a demon in him. Like the Joker, he getting punched in the face in a movie. He's crying, laughing. The Lord said the nation of Israel is like that. Why should I keep on whooping you? Y'all not taking it serious. Read it again. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. He said your whole head is sick, meaning all the leadership. Your minds ain't right. None of y'all think the right way. A lot of us think we some magical Negro because we learned to understand the Bible. He's saying, you sick. You sick in the head. You might think you regular or you got something figured out that somebody else ain't got figured out, but the Lord telling you sick. You don't know that the Lord created fire to appease his anger. You don't understand the judgments of God. You don't understand what's right and wrong to do in your life. But you think you're right because we lack humility. <laughs> Go ahead. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. 
They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And he said all the things that are wrong with us have not been healed yet, right? Because we don't know who we are. We don't know what to do. Isaiah 59 and verse 1. We don't know our nationality. We don't know up from down. We don't know left from right. We don't know what to do with our finances. We don't know what to do when it comes to coping. That's the thing black men deal with a whole lot. When we go on the streets, a lot of brothers drunk and high because they don't know how to cope. A lot of y'all smoking weed and get drunk because you don't know how to cope. Because you're sick in the head. Think about it. You're broke, so you buy weed to get high to numb the pain of being broke. Amazing. Amazing. Right? Amazing. I, I watch Negroes do this all the time. You, you're sick, you're mad about your job, so you get drunk, and then you got to go buy water after that to replenish your body because you're mad about your job. I thought you was broke. You, my good sir, are stupid. So the Bible say, Bible say we were simple. We corrected problems and made problems. That's why I said whatever it is, we're corrupted. We're corrupted. You know people right now, I guarantee, who got lung cancer still smoke cigarettes. Shit, I'm gonna die Damn. anyway. I'm gonna die anyway. You know what I'm saying? Might well keep hitting me black in my house. Go ahead. Hey, I, I know somebody who who told me he was like, I'm afraid to stop smoking cigarettes because I don't want to get lung. I don't want to get cancer because people who stop. They get cancer. I'm like, you know what's causing cancer, and you're afraid to stop because you don't want cancer? <laughs> you can't make it up, bro. Go ahead, yo. <laughs> yo. That's why there's fire on the earth. Because the Lord said, I tried logic. I tried. I tried to come to you and say, yo, I'm going to put a Surgeon General warning. You pick up the cigarettes and go, nah, that don't, that don't apply to me. That, I ain't going to get that. Cancel for him. You pick up the alcohol and say, don't operate vehicles while driving. Nah, I could drive better when I'm drunk. That's what the Negro do. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. So the Lord is not uh, incapable of saving us. Go ahead. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, uh -huh. and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. The sins that we do on a daily basis is what's separating us from God. That's where we at. As a people, the Israelites understood that. We're disconnected from God because of our sin. We don't have the kingdom that was promised to us because of our sin. Church don't, church don't teach you this. They tell you you're going to die and get the kingdom everywhere. Anyway. All you got to do is come to church every Sunday. When you die, you'll get the opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. All dogs go to heaven. Keep reading. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Uh -huh. Your lips have spoken. You know how your hands are defiled with blood? When you punch that brother in the face and his nose started bleeding, your hands were defiled with blood. <laughs> right? When you murdered and you had hatred, your hands were defiled with blood. When you stole, you had sin on your hands. All of y'all, y'all stole something. All y'all stole something in here. Some of y'all, y'all like to steal pens out the office and be like, well, this should be, I mean, they let me use the pen so I can take it home. You a thief. You a thief. You a thief. They thieving out around here, bro. In the truth. Hey, look, look at how many people are like, oh, damn. Damn, I stole a pen yesterday. God damn. Oh, he talking about me. Let me go. Let me go ahead and put. <laughs> Brother Slider, you see pens start going in the trash can? Don't throw it away in here. You got the devil on you. Take it back to work. You a thief. Because we don't think about things like that because we corrupt in the mind. Go ahead. And your fingers with iniquity. And your, lip, your lips have spoken lies. Who, who don't lie in here? Raise your hand if you never lie. Oh, thank God. I was going to call security. Go ahead. Your tongue has... Thank God. I was going to... Yo, y'all might be in the spirit. I was going to call security, Boda. I was going to tell you go get them, bro. Somebody said they don't lie at all. They lying. Oh, you. Shalom, Israel. Most high and Christ blessed. Hebrews chapter 10 and 25 said, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves, as a man or some is, but exhorting one another. And so much more as we see the day approaching. Come on down to La Mesa, California, 7254 University Avenue, and come get some of this good news you can use. Shalom. Go ahead. Your tongue hath muttered per perversiveness. Your tongue talks about evil and wickedness. Every time you call your mama, she gossiping, saying perverseness and wickedness. You sisters all over here, I know that's all you hear every day. Every woman you talk to, girl, mm -mm, let me tell you about Becca. That's it. You be like, damn, I don't want to. 
I don't want to gossip, but the demon is calling me. Then you end up in a conversation for 45 minutes about somebody that ain't here to defend themselves because our minds ain't right. Only way y'all can avoid that is not talk to no, no women. Go ahead. Uh, verse 4, none called for justice, nor any pleaded for truth. So here's the point, right? As a people, we're not calling for justice. Why? Because our minds are corrupt. We don't see a reason to fix anything. Go ahead. They trust in vanity. We trust in the vain things we got, our money, our coals, our finances. Right? You got to think what well, we trust in, in that vanity against. Against nuclear fire. You think your bag or your sneakers or the car you drive can stop a bomb? You can't stop no damn bomb. But we trust in it. We wake up every day and we don't put emphasis on what we need to do for God. We put emphasis on what we need to do to get the bag, to get rich. Go ahead. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Go ahead. They hatch cockatrice eggs. Cockatrice is a snake. They're snakes. Go ahead. And weave the spider's web. They weave a web because a web traps people like a black widow. That's what it's saying. We wake up and we scheme and we plot. We're snakes amongst each other. We're trapping each other. Go ahead. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. Uh-huh. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Go ahead. Their webs shall not become garments. Now that when it says their webs shall not become garments, give me Isaiah 28 and verse 20. What they believe is that the traps that they set up or the schemes or the plots that you have, you think it's going to help you. Like, for an example, a spider's web is silk, right? Mm -hmm. That silk, you use it to make a garment. That's what it's going into here. Watch Isaiah 28 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 20. It's saying the same thing. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. Imagine you're on a bed and your legs is hanging off the side. This is how the Lord's saying this is what we trust in. The things we trust in is like being on a bed with your legs hanging off the side. That ain't going to work. Half your body hanging off. Your lower back hurt. Your feet dangling. This is how we believe that we're going to be saved. Read it again. Watch. For the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on it. You can't even stretch out on the thing you believe in. Mm. It's not sufficient. Go ahead. And the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. Imagine you got a blanket and every time you pull it around yourself, something loose. Y'all been there. You get a blanket, you visit somebody's house, they give you the blanket, you put it over your body, you got to curl up in a ball and hope the blanket cover you. Now your feet out, now you got to roll again, now your head out. You're like, damn, I'm cold, man. This ain't even my house. I'm cold, I'm uncomfortable. He said, this is how the lies that you believe in are. They don't cover you. They don't protect you. Jump back. And that's what Christianity teaches you on a daily basis, is that these things will cover you, that they'll protect you. But when, when the virus was on the earth and everybody was locked in their house, the Christian church had no answers. When, when people die in the street, the Christian church has no answers as to why that keeps happening. They have no answers. They can't address for the people why these issues are happening and how we fix them. What do we need to fix them? Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 6. Their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. And the act of violence is in their hands. Give me verse 4 one more time. Verse 4. I missed something. Go back. None calleth for justice, uh -huh. nor any pleadeth for truth. Uh -huh. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth a nuclear. Give me the, uh, I gave you an article on Haiti. Yep. Give me that real quick. Watch this. It says, none calleth for justice. How many of y'all seen on your social media pray for Haiti? Okay. I see really nobody. None of the brothers seen that. At all. Maybe a couple of y'all sisters saw it. But the point I'm making is when France was going through what France was going through, you had graphics, you had emojis, pray for France, pray for Israel. Now, when Haiti's in a state of emergency, Negroes don't even know what the hell going on in Haiti. The majority of people have no clue. What, they speaking against it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They going in on Haiti and, and, and them being effed up and so on and so forth, right? Let's read the article. Watch. Al Jazeera, anarchy in Haiti as state of emergency extended. Haiti extended a state of emergency in the capital of Port-au-Prince as authorities struggled to rein in powerful armed gang. Uh, armed yesterday, Kevin got a lie did an excellent class on this, um, on escaping the plantation. So if you ain't watched it, go watch it. It was yesterday. Um, but this has, I won't say it ceased, but they said since the president's left, it's calmed down. But Port-au-Prince is a very small part of the entire island. What this is is a narrative that's being pushed. But our people, we ignorant to it. We don't look at justice. We're not looking for Haiti's justice. 
That's the point I'm making. We don't give a damn because we trust in our cause, our money. We wake up every day, even though we're in the body, and we don't give a damn about what's going on with our brothers and sisters throughout the world because we disconnected. Go ahead. Haiti's government has said it will extend a state of emergency and nighttime curfew to try to curb violent gang attacks that have paralyzed the capital. Port-au-Prince is a fierce battle for political power. An initial three-day curfew was announced over the weekend. But gangs have continued to attack police stations and other state institutions at night, at, at night as the national police struggle to contain the violence with limited staff and resources. The attacks began a week ago, shortly after embattled Prime Minister Ariel Henry agreed to hold general elections in mid-2025 while attending a meeting of Caribbean leaders in Guyana. So what's going on is there's a leader, right, named Barbecue, and he's gathering the people to go against the government that the United States is trying to set up. That's what's happening in Haiti. But Negroes don't care about justice. That's happening. We don't care because go go back to Isaiah 59 and verse 4. We destroyed as a people. We don't realize these are our brothers. We got resources. We have understanding that we can help them with. We don't got that on our mind. Even though we know the truth, we not even looking at this because what? It's being painted on the news a certain way because Esau told you this is how it works. This is what's going on. You believe in it. You just go to work every day. You go, okay. Oh, Haiti's jacked up. Oh, well. Yep. Let me go to my job. Got to work. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 4. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Jump to verse 6. Verse 6. Their web shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. So the things that are happening on earth, you can't cover yourself with lies. That's the point it's making. Go ahead. Their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Read. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Their mind is full of sin. That's where you are when you don't understand the truth, when you don't understand who you are. Your mind is full of sin. And coming in here, you got to understand your mind has been filled with sin for 20-some years. Right? If you've been in the truth, who shall real quick? How long you been in the, how long uh, were you in the world before you came in the truth? Give me Luke 13, watch this. See? Shalom, sharp brother shy. Luke 13, 16, I think. Uh like 20 years. 20 years. Now watch this. You can sit down. We'll just use you as an example. We'll use you as an example. Now, as I read the scripture, think about how long you was in the in the world, right? I think it's 13 and verse 16. Start at verse, let me see. Let me look at it. You see it, officer? You said, hmm, Luke 13, give me start at verse 15. Luke chapter 13 and verse 15. Bring it the up. Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrites, doth not each of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? The Lord said the ass know his master's crib, right? So we belong to the Lord. The Lord said on the Sabbath, won't you go and release your ox or free him? Because he's bound up, right? He's chained up. He can't go feed himself. He can't go take care of himself, do the things that he needs to do in order to survive. Watch what the Lord says next. Go ahead. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound, lo, these 18 years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day? What you got to understand, you was bound by Satan before you understood the truth. You were bound for 20 years, 18 years, 35 years of sin. Thoughts are evil. So if you think I'm going to come in here in a year and I'm going to have my mind right, you're wrong. That's what Christianity will teach you. Christianity will teach you you're going to come in here, right, and you're going to be all right. You're going to be above people. Talk about other people. Have a mindset where you're better than people. Don't continue to humble yourself because you're great now. You worship the one true God. But when you understand the Bible, you understand, dang, I was caught up in Christianity for 35 years. That's 35 years of sin. My humility got to be great in order to repent, Right? You got to have great humility to realize, dang, for 35 years I was in sin. For 40 years I was in sin. For 50 years I was in sin. Doing everything wrong when it came to God. Now I know what's right according to God. Shouldn't I be pushing myself harder to make sure I do the right thing? I'm trying to come back 50 years of evil. Go back to Isaiah 59. That's why the Lord would loose people's sins and tell them, go sin no more. Go back. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 7. seven. Bring it up. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Their mind is full of sin. 
That's where your mind was. Your mind was full of sin. Now you're trying to clean out the sin of, out of your mind. That's what the process of repentance is. Go ahead. Wasting and destruction are in their path. All you did was evil. Go ahead. The way of peace, they know not. They don't know how to find peace. That's why y'all was stressed out. Smoking, drinking, clubbing on Friday, right? Multiple women you was dealing with, food, whatever your vice was. You had a vice. It wasn't the Bible. Read. And there is no judgment in their, in their goings. They have made them crooked. What, what did Christianity say? Only God could judge me. There's no judgment in their goings. They don't judge each other. This one could cheat on his wife and have three kids while he sit right next to his brother. He'll never say, yo, yo, bro, that's kind of wrong, you know. I, I mean, little Leroy, me and him be hooping in the backyard together. You're, you're cheating on his, on his mom. She doesn't know. And maybe I shouldn't drop you off over here. Hey, bro, let me know when you need to ride back to the crib. That's bro code. Bro code is a lack of judgment. Girl code was a lack of judgment. Go ahead. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made their crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Read. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold, obscurity. For brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We walking around, but we dead. In the spirit. That's what the Lord is saying. We're dead. Because when that fire come, you're going to be physically dead. But right now, your spirit's already not right with God. You're already in the path of destruction. That's what he's telling you. You're walking around. You're going to work. But if your mind ain't with me, you're dead. Go ahead. We roar, we roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. Read. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. And our sins testify against us, for our transgressions are with us, and for our iniquities, we know them. We know what we're doing wrong. That's the worst part about us as a people. And Christianity enables that. You know you're wrong. When you stole and the cookie jar, my grandmother used to have a talking cookie jar. It said, meow. It would alert me that I'm stealing. Still stolen. Now you numb. Now if the police tell you you're stealing, hey. I'm out because I've developed no conscience. Y'all understand? That's how y'all are. Before you came in here for 40 years, you had no conscience on that thing you was dealing with. That's why when you act like it's not a problem, right? This is a side note. I'm jumping off the deep end. But when you're dealing with stuff in here, being a repentant Israelite, and you act like I ain't got a problem, there's no issue, that's that old man telling you, it's okay. Just keep dealing with it. You've been dealing with this bad attitude, right? This thieving spirit, this whoremonger spirit for 40 years. You ain't got to tell nobody you're dealing with this. It's not real. Because that's what you said when you was a thief in the world. When you stole and brought to the house, you said, it's mine now. It's in my house. To, to numb the conscience. When the, when the two women was texting your phone and one of them started tripping, you ain't say, damn, I'm dealing with two women. I'm wrong. You said, she's tripping. Because you didn't accept your responsibility. Now you come into the truth, you still don't got that mind to accept your responsibility. You know what you're doing wrong. That's what he's saying. Read the verse again. Verse 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. We know we the devil. Go ahead. And transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Read. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth has fallen in the street, mm -hmm. and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth, and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it dis displeased him that there was no judgment. And that's what Christianity will show you, no judgment. All the things we talk about that say, yo, it's fine. But we understand there's a judgment day coming. So go back to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. We understand there's a judgment day coming. So knowing we in a state like we read in Isaiah chapter 59, that our minds ain't right, we commit sin after sin after sin, and we need to be repenting and get right for the day of the Lord. Read 2 Peter 3 and 11. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. Read it Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be? That's the difference between a repentant Israelite and a Christian. A repentant Israelite asks, him, asks himself or herself, what type of person am I going to be? What am I going to do? When destruction comes, 
Am I going to be right with God or am I going to be wrong with God? And that's a conversation you got to have internally daily. A Christian has no conscience. They don't have to consider if they're wrong. They don't have to consider what sins they're in. They know what sins they're in, and they don't give a damn. Read it again. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? Read. In all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God. They were looking for the day of God, and they were hasting towards it. Go ahead. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Read. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We're looking for a new heavens and a new earth where we can no longer sin, where we write with God, where the sin is off of us. That's what you're looking for. Christians ain't looking for that. They want to go to heaven and have a party with Biggie. I want to go to the heavens and get Tupac, and we're going to play Only God Could Judge Me Doug. in heaven at Doug, Doug Mansion. Oh, my God. The hell is this? You gonna make me throw the microphone, Doug Mansion? I ain't think about that. Brother got a whole song. Is there a heaven for a gangster? No, ain't no heaven for a gangster. <laughs> Read. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. That's what he was teaching the people to remind themselves about. Stay without spot and be blameless as it goes according to the law. Meaning you do what the scriptures say. Meaning you follow it. It don't mean you ain't going to have flaws in you or sin that you're battling with. But the difference between Christianity is they do not push you towards perfection. They told you there's no way you can be perfect. There's no way. Give me Matthew 5 verse 40 in case somebody got a Christian mind in here. That's why we're going over this. Because some of y'all are still Christians. Some of y'all is here. Y'all don't take notes. Right? Y'all come to every Sabbath. You have no intention on changing your behavior. So you come in the Sabbath every week just to die. You come into the class on Tuesday just to show up. But your spirit's not converting. Matthew 5, verse 48. M Matthew chapter 5 and verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You see what Christ told you? That's what he called you to be. Be perfect, right? Hey, make sure y'all are really paying attention, taking notes, because we all have things that we need to work on. And what the officers are bringing out is very important. We got to learn to be real with ourselves and be honest, because that's the only way we're going to get out of here, right? Uh, give me uh, Mark 7, 21. Mark chapter 7 and verse 21. Bring it out. For from within, out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts. Stop, stop, stop. Who's a man here? Okay, we got man. Okay, who's of man here? Right, sisters. So w this applies to all of us. Out of the heart of men proceed what? Evil thoughts. Evil thoughts. God is telling you, in our mind are evil thoughts. That's there. That's something we have to battle with. But if we don't acknowledge that, if we don't examine that within ourselves to, to what the officer is saying, how are you going to overcome that and be accepted by the Lord? I in the world, in Christianity, it's almost like they're, they're trying to require God to accept them. They say, come as you are, or you can't, you have to accept me for me. Like they try to say in relationships, they teach us to be that way with God. He has to accept me for me. He's here for me. No, we were created to serve God. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Uh-huh. Adultery. Some of us in here have thoughts of adulteries. Go ahead. Fornication. Some of us in here have thoughts of fornications. Go ahead. Murders. Some of us in here have thoughts of murders, which also goes into hatred. Hatred for your brother, your sister. God is, tells us that's murder when you read the scriptures. Go ahead. Thefts. Thefts. Some of us have a, uh, are, are kleptomaniacs, or we like to steal. Covetousness. Right? And then you could keep on reading. These are all things that we got within us that we have to battle. So we have to be honest and, and say, you know what? I've got this issue. I need to overcome this because... If not, I'm not going to get to the kingdom of heaven. I'm not going to be acceptable in the sight of the Lord. Right. First Corinthians 2 and 6. You got to know what I want when I know what I want. First Corinthians 2 and 6. First Perfect. Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 6. Bring it out. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. You see what Paul called the congregation? He called them them that are perfect. Read it again. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Uh-huh. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world, 
that come to not. He said the people of this world, the Christians, they're going to come to death. But I'm speaking amongst the perfect because he understood the people's standard that they were held to was perfection, right? Go back to 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. He understood that where the Lord needed you was to be perfect, without spot, without blemish. That's what you're pushing towards. It can't be that you're pushing towards evil. It can't be that you're pushing towards mediocre. The Lord don't want you like that. He wants you to be pushing towards a standard of being blameless. Read that. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Read it out. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the Real quick for verse 14. Give me John 5 and verse 39. I'm considering it. You know, I got I got a whole bunch written down. We ain't even get to the meat and potatoes. Damn. John 5, 39. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Read it out. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Uh, he, t he told you to search the scriptures and find eternal life in them. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. Christians don't even read the damn Bible. They ain't searching those scriptures. When you was in the church, you didn't pick up the Bible on Sunday. You went on Sunday. They said, we're going to go to the book of Psalms 95. We're going to read verse 16. You were looking for it for 40 minutes. You didn't know how to turn through your Bible. You looking. By the time you find it, the pastor already got the Bible turned to the one psalm you're going to read all day. He might read it. He might not read it. And he just start going in for the next 30 minutes. Your children fall asleep. You might fall asleep. Huh? And then at the end, he start humming. Mm -hmm. To the state. Mm -hmm. Then you wake up. You're like, oh, dang. Church over. All right. Then. Praise God. I'm trying to go to the house. I'm trying to go smoke, eat, something else. I'm bored. Because you wasn't paying attention. You was not learning repentance. You wasn't searching those scriptures in the church. Give me Luke chapter uh, 21 and verse 33. I'm trying to go outside and play. Man, about this church. I like church because they had donuts. Damn. They have powerful <laughs> niggardry at work. That's camp. why, too. They what they got going on in San Diego? They got donuts in church. Hey, 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 hey officer, donuts, Paul. Officer, at the end of every. This is. <laughs> hey, no, hey, sir. When I was in elementary school, at the end of every session, they had donuts. And my mom would get us donuts. So I was like, we getting donuts this week. Damn. I was excited. So she, she tricked you into worshiping white Jesus with Krispy Kreme. The, the church was selling it there for the people. Damn. Damn. What the hell is this? It was a dollar a donut. Damn. Yeah. A dollar a donut, that's what you remember? And you was in there saying, praise God. That's all it took. <laughs> that's all I remember. That's all it took. <laughs> Damn. Luke's, yeah, what? Uh, y'all know y'all know this is never going to end, right? I don't know why y'all did this to yourself. <laughs> Give me, just, kiss, just to get to the point. Give me Luke chapter 21 and give me verse uh, 34. Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. Read it out. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. Go ahead. And drunkenness uh -huh. and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Read. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So what he mentioned was you need to watch your sins and fix them so that you'll be worthy to stand before God. The Israelites always knew that was the goal. We need to be worthy to stand before God, so we got to get out of sin. All these letters you read, everything that the prophets are saying is cleanse yourself so when the Lord comes and he brings destruction, you don't got to get destroyed with everybody else. That's never the message in the church. So everything here always goes back to fear the Lord and keep the commandments. Always. But in the church, it goes back to have fun, give me tithes, right? And you're going to be all right in sin. The Lord's going to save you with his mercy, with the, with the blood of Jesus. And donuts, apparently. Glazed donuts. Paul. Damn. Go back to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. I'm up here with the glazed donut brothers. God damn. For 20-some years, too, huh? Huh? Second Peter <laughs> chapter 3 and verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, 
Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, mm -hmm. without spot and blameless. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Read. As also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things in which ye are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, mm -hmm. as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. See, what a Christian doesn't know, give me Matthew 28, verse 17. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 17. Yeah, they wrestle with the scriptures. Here's an example. Read. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Give me, uh, remember what he said, even until the end of the world. We know from reading the Bible that at the end of the world, the Israelites were going to stand. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. But an unstable Christian, they wrestle with the fact that all nations here is talking about this. Deuteron Deuteronomy 4 and verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. Because they tell you in the church, don't read the Old Testament. Read Psalms and the New Testament. I don't know what book y'all ever bought that y'all started at the end of it and said, I'm going to get understanding from this. Let me just read the back half. Let me read the back one-third of the class. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there ye shall serve God's. The work of men's hands. Deuteronomy 4 and 27. Just yes, sir. That. Verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So when you get scattered amongst the enemy, the Lord said you would be serving other gods, right? He said, I'm going to scatter you. You know why? Because of sin. That's why. We were in sin. He said, I'm going to send you all over the earth. So when he sent the apostles back on earth, he said, go and teach them. Wake them back up. Show them who they are, what they need to be doing. I don't know, Pompadour over here uh, uh, shook me because I'm like, what are you standing up for? Anyway, yeah, that's why I call you Pompadour. Hell yeah, you're going to get cut about that, that afro. Anyway, so we got scattered because of our sin. That's what happened. Y'all understand? So when you read Matthew chapter 28, read that one more time. Bro, we ain't getting to nothing, bro. Huh? I'm only in the first two points. It would have been better if y'all would have woke up. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. It's always good. This is the right time. Go, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, Read. baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Give me Luke chapter 24 real quick and verse 44. Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. Read it and he said unto them. So, so what we understand is the Christians, right, that as they were called back then, the apostles, they got sent on a mission. That's what they would call apostles, men on a mission. They got sent to go teach the Israelites what the Bible says about destruction and what's coming. That's what they were here for. Then Christianity took the same book and said, let me make a church off of the mission that the Lord gave the apostles. And they made some nonsense up. This was the mission, Luke 24 and verse 44. Luke chapter 24 and verse 44. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled, uh -huh. which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Jump down to verse 46. Verse 46, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Read. And that repentance. And that what? And that repentance uh -huh. and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance means to turn away from your sin. There was only one group of people ever given the laws to sin against them. Everybody wasn't given the laws of God. Christianity don't teach you that. They tell you everybody can repent. Everybody going to get the kingdom of heaven. But everybody ain't get the laws. Give me Psalms 147 real quick so we can prove that. Again, there might be a Christian in the midst. Somebody might be like, well, God loves everybody. He don't because he never loved everybody in the beginning. 
When everybody was on the earth, remember, there was more people than just Adam. He chose Adam. When everybody was on the earth and Abraham was on the earth, there was more people on the earth, he went to Abraham. He never loved everybody. That's Christianity that tell you he loved everybody. I don't, we don't read the same Bible. Christianity got you. They pull a wool over your eyes, and that's how you know you was bound by Satan for 20-some years. Satan's a good liar. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. Jacob is an individual. That's one person. He showed his, his word unto Jacob. Go ahead. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Israel are the sons of Jacob. His nation. Go ahead. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hasn't done that with anybody else. So when you go back now, you read what, we're, what we've read in Matthew, I mean Luke 24 and verse 47. Go Luke, ahead. Luke chapter 24 and verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins. Go ahead. Should be preached in his name among all nations. Why? Because we were scattered everywhere. Read. Beginning at Jerusalem. Start at Jerusalem where my people are and show them what they're doing wrong. Then I need you to go out on the entire earth and show them what they're doing wrong. So Christianity is the biggest hustle on the planet. It's a hustle. I watched them dudes over there. They was playing basketball on basketball hoops. I said, we're going to go over here. We're going to get some milk carts. We're going to make the same game. We're going to call it cart skip ball. Huh? We got more funding. We're going to play with oranges. And everybody said, man, I'm rolling with them. I like cart skip ball. Meanwhile, he was playing basketball. It's a hustle. They took what the Lord said to do, and they said, you know what we could do? We could make money off this. We can make money off this. If we tell people that God loves everybody, we could hustle them. We could get to say, we could take the mission, corrupt it, remove the repentance, tell them, come as you are. We ain't got to get put to death. We ain't got to go through none of the struggle that the apostles did, and we could bring them in and we could make millions of dollars off of them. Read. Verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. The witnesses are supposed to teach what? What happened to Christ, the black Messiah. But now you got a whole religion called Jehovah's Witnesses. And none of his witnesses was Caucasian. None of them. None of them was Caucasian. How did that happen? Amazing. Then, you know what they said? We're going to make our own Bibles. We're going to make our own magazines. And our people, because we destroyed and we were blinded, we said, we're going to walk up in there. We're going to learn from them. That's how you know the difference. One has a mission from God. The other has man-made BS they're dealing with. They made covenants with the devil. Give me uh, Isaiah chapter 28. Let's get to the point. Verse 15. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. We've made a covenant with death, with Satan. Go ahead. And with hell are we at agreement. We like the oppression we're facing. Just keep me on top of in the oppression. As long as you give me an Audi. And a nice job, I worship you, Satan. I'm cool with that. I'm going to go to church every Sunday. I'm going to find a lot of these people, tell them keep bringing tithes. I know that ain't biblical. Who give a damn? I'm going to be all right. It's like uh, uh, the dude in Matrix who said, don't e I don't even want to know I'm back in there. I don't even want to know I'm back in the Matrix. Just put me back. Go ahead. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge. We made them short blankets our refuge. Read. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. We hide ourselves under the lies of Christianity. We know it's a damn lie. The pastor full of it. He asks you if you get swallowed up. Right? This pastor over here is singing under the blood. This pastor over here talking about getting swallowed up. This pastor over here is pouring syrup on the Bible. We're going to follow them because these lies is more comfortable than having to change ourselves. That's the difference between a repentant Israelite and a Christian. A repentant Israelite got to look at themselves and say, damn, I'm not right with God. A Christian don't got to do that. Come as you are. Come as you are and accept these lies, and you're going to be all right with me. Just keep giving me your money. Give me Sirach chapter 33 and verse 14. I got 17 minutes to get through 45 minutes. not going to happen, but we're going to make it happen. Sirach huh? chapter Go ahead. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 14. Bring it out. Good is set against evil mm -hmm. and life against death. What you have to understand is there's opposing forces that the Lord created. The Lord knew in order for the, the Israelite to be their best, they need nem a nemesis. They Just like Christ 
had the Romans and the Pharisees and the wicked of our people, we got the Christians today, right, the believers of white Jesus, they're going to rise up against us. Because in order for you to become that perfect, you got to stand in opposition to something. Read it again. Good is set against evil. There's no question about it. There's going to be a positive force on the earth. When it's all said and done, there's going to be a negative force. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Go ahead. And life against death. I'm going to show you what life looks like, and I'm going to show you what death looks like. Go ahead. So is the godly against the sinner? The godly is against the sinner. You at war. That's the difference. A Christian church doesn't show you you at war. You go to church every Sunday. They allow you to come out calm. I remember one time we was outside the Rock Church. They was watching Remember the Titans. That's what they did. They went to the church to watch a football movie. What in the hell is that telling you about not burning when the Lord come? He's going to burn you. They don't put no fear on me watching Remember the Titans. I'm not playing football. The hell? I stay from around white folk. What, what, am I, what am I watching Remember the Titans for if I'm an Israelite and I'm trying to repent? It's not helping me. But Christianity has pulled that wool over your eyes. Why? Because the goal in them is to keep you in evil. Read. So is the godly against the sinner and Please. the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High, and there are two and two. Yep, there it go. There's what? two and two. Go ahead. One against another. The Lord said everything I create is one thing against another. Go ahead. I have waked up last of all as one that gathereth after the grape gatherers. Nope, that's it. I just wanted that verse. So what you got to understand, the goal of Christianity is to be anti-Israel. That's the goal, right? Simple things like first, give me first John chapter four and verse two. Watch this, and then we go on to um, we go into that uh, 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 that TikTok video. First John chapter four and verse two. Just have it ready, it. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. So every spirit that confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What a Christian will not confess is Christ came, right? They'll confess he came, but they won't confess he had a body. And on that body, there was flesh. They'll tell you things like he was olive. He was every color, brother. If you met a man that could change colors, they would capture that Negro and put him in a museum. He will be in the zoo. Wouldn't be no Negro walking around that could switch from white to black to invisible to green to light green to dark green. Where he at? We need to save the world with him. That's a damn superhero. There, he could have got us off the slave ships. He could have turned into a white man and freed us all. Where he at? We need him. Where's his lineage at? We need him. The hell? He, you telling me he came down and he was walking around shits and colors and it's only one book we can read about him? Hell no. Hell no. It'd be a TV show. It'd be everything. Brothers would have did the, Esau would have found out how to change colors. He sort of put him, chopped his body up, took his DNA back then in the time of Rome and tried to figure out how to change colors. They some damn liars. That's the point. And that's how you know you're dealing with Antichrist. Read it again. Watch. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. They're not of God because why? They don't tell the truth about what the Bible says. Give me Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8 real quick. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. Now go, write it before them in Start a verse. Give me verse 9 just to get to the point. Verse 9. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Tell us something smooth. That make us feel good on the inside. That's what you got for 30 years, 40 years in a Christian church. Now you come in the truth, you don't want to keep it real. Because what you want is you still want to be that Christian. You still want to be that Israelite and know your nationality, but you want that Christian energy. You don't really want the friction that comes with changing yourself. In order to change water to ice, it got to freeze. You understand? That's not a smooth process. In order for something to go from being solid gold to being melted gold, it has to go through fire. So there's some roughness that comes with changing. Christianity taught you to avoid that roughness at all costs. So you like things like this. Play the video you got, the, the one I just posted. I posted in the group. I'll give you a second and pull it up. Psalms 106 and verse 3, real quick. 
No, 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 no. I'm gonna wait. Read Isaiah 30 and verse uh, 10 one more time. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 10. Because IT still sleep, man. They take a long naps. So go ahead. Which say to the seers, see not. Read. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. They want deceit. What the people want is to be lied to. And if it's smooth and it sounds good, they'll take it. Go ahead. I think I gave you all a starting point too, but you could just start it from the beginning. This pastor snapped in his sermon. Most of the time, our churches want to preach to you a cute version of Jesus. But I'm going to preach today that dangerous version of Jesus. I'm talking about that dangerous side of Jesus that got him killed. That side of Jesus. I'm talking about the side of Jesus where if you preach this accurately, they would stone you or kill you. I'm talking about the type of Jesus that if we were to allow him to grace our pulpits, many pastors would never invite him back. Because his message would contradict the pastor's agenda. Because if Jesus could preach in our churches on today, <laughs> I'm talking about that dangerous Jesus, that version of Jesus that will flip over tables in our lobbies. That's more about a church brand than the Great Commission. That dangerous Jesus that will flip over these royal chairs that be in pulpits, that have pastors acting as though they're celebrities and mini stars instead of ministers. And they care more about gaining followers than making disciples. I'm talking about that Jesus. That, that dangerous Jesus that will flip over tables that's more about church growth than church health. I'm talking about that dangerous side of Jesus that will frustrate those who are gossiping and bad-mouthing about somebody else's sin who went public. Bad-mouthing those who we know their sexual sin. But if truth be told, many of us did the same thing. The only difference is yours wasn't on the shade room. The only difference is yours wasn't recorded and uploaded to OnlyFans. The only difference, y'all don't want to talk to me, will preach against somebody's sex tape and you did the same thing, just it wasn't recorded. That dangerous version of Jesus that will frustrate racists who claim to be Christian, that will frustrate bigots. I right, cut it off. I know what just happened, officer. Right now, y'all like, man, he's telling the truth. He in the spirit, kind of, because you're still a Christian. He ain't saying nothing about the Great Commission and what we're here to do. That's not what's in his head. Even though the brother might say something that sounds good, it's smooth. Read that again. That's what we like. That's what our people like. We see that. We go, damn, that brother's in the spirit, kind of. Yeah, I know. I know, because in your spirit, you're looking at it going, huh, he kind of all right. Huh. Maybe we get him a flyer, but right now, where's he at? He on the wrong side of God. He's doing the same things they're talking about. Psalm 106 and verse 3. He's on stage gossiping about people who gossip. He's on stage to, uh, admitting, don't get on T.D. Jakes for getting swallowed up because you do the same thing. Ain't you supposed to get on somebody for sin? Ain't you supposed to rebuke your brother? But that's Christianity. When you hear that, you go, dang, I kind of like this pastor. He's better than the other pastor. He better than that pastor because the way he said that was kind of smooth. Yeah. There ain't no Bible. It ain't up there. The Bible is gone. The Bible, he took the Bible and said, you don't need this. They're going to hear me today. He kept on talking about the dangers of Jesus. Like, when you going to bring it up? <laughs> <laughs> ain't no reader. Ain't nobody to read the Bible. The Bible is open for show. Read that. Psalms chapter 106 and verse 3. Read it out. Blessed are they that keep judgment. Uh-huh. And he that doeth righteousness at all times. He that doeth righteousness at all times. In order for us to keep judgment and do righteousness, we need to read the Bible. That's where it's found. That's where we're going to understand what the right things and the wrong things are. But he don't teach you nothing. He said, I want to show you that Jesus that would show you fear. But he ain't bring out that Jesus. He ain't say, give me, give me Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28. He didn't say, Jesus will cut your head off. Before you read that, give me Luke uh, 19 and verse 27. Let's just get to a point. Let's show you. He ain't bring out this Jesus. He ain't bring out this Jesus. Not this Jesus. He still he brought out off-white Jesus. It was off-white. He went all the way white, but off-white. Read that. Luke chapter 19 and verse 27. Read it out. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should. This is Jesus. Watch what he said. Go ahead. Which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, and slay them before me. He said, when you bring them here, kill them, and I'm going to watch. The ones that don't want to listen to me, when we get to the wilderness, 
Bring them in front of me. I'm going to sit on my throne, and let's, I'm going to watch their head roll. When I see this, I see the head roll, and I see the Lord say, let's keep the spirit in there for a little bit. Let's let them talk. Do you realize your body's over there? Help him out. Spin his head. Spin his head. He'd be like, damn, that is my body. All right, kill him now. This is how I think of the Lord. When we read the Bible, we like, yo, the Lord going to be smooth. He's going to come over. He's going to sing kumbaya. Jesus loves the little children. Jesus loves the little He's going he gonna to walk upon them, right? That's not Jesus. Jesus is going to say, yo, she still got an attitude. This one right here wanted to sneak off and eat some pork. Bring them all right here and line them up. Get a sword. You're going to be in line. You're going to be the 15th one back. What the hell happening up there? I think Jesus called it. Damn. Oh, shit. Oh, they screaming. Oh, God, I'm in this line. Can I get out the line? Please. I repent now. Please. And then you're going to be listening to this dude. He's going to be behind you. He's going to be right behind you with the smooth words. Give me the next video. You got the next video? You sure? Nah, not him. Give me, uh, you got Kevin on stage? All right, give me that one. I got to hurry up for time's sake. Doom, doom, doom. We got to get that one. Come on, hit play on this. This is a man who pushes Christianity everywhere. Right? Many people know him from pushing Christianity. Watch this video now. Oh. Now I just I walk down the street, big blunts, biblical blunts, yeah. burning bush blunts. You know what I'm saying? God, God ain't the only one trying to be the most high. You understand me? No, I, don't, I can't doubt that. I'd really prefer if you just came sober so God could pour into you. <sighs> okay, well, what if I just ate like a brownie or something? Brownie's fine. You can eat a brownie. Really? Yeah, I got no problem with brownies. You eat brownies? Absolutely, I mean... <laughs> Come on, you don't think I eat brownies? Well, no, you're fat. I'm saying you've eaten brownies, brownies. I've eaten brownies, brownies. I think that's fine. They don't have any aroma. It's perfect you can eat those before church, maybe even sneak a bite during church. Oh, okay. You want some? You want me to bring you some? Yeah, I'd love some. I, I'll, I'll bring you a brownie. Perfect. Why not? I'll take two. Two? I'll, I'll take a pan. I'll make a whole batch. All right, my brother. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. I guess we can both be the most high. <laughs> Smoke before church. Give me First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. This is what Christianity teaches you. You could play with God. You could play with God and make money off of it. This is how we think. Read First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. I know you're distraught by the video, my brother. But read. It frustrated me, too. Go ahead. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. Bring it up. Be sober. You see what the Bible say? Go ahead. Be vigilant. Be sober and be alert. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Christianity tells you your adversary, the devil, is just a, a spiritual entity and uh, he's coming and uh, he's going to get you. But they don't show you that there's people on earth who want you to die. There's people on earth who plot against you. There's police officers who embody the, sa the, the spirit of Satan on earth. And the goal, right, of the people that have that spirit on earth is to keep you from repenting. So what do they give you? Things like weed. And this guy says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to eat a brownie and I'm going to go to church. Matter of fact, you could take some in church. And that's how you know you're dealing with Satan. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. This is how you know. Because that type of stuff, the man that was the Christian across the table that knew the Bible was supposed to say, no, the Bible said we got to be sober, brother. We can't get high at all. Actually, no, no, no. I'm a Christian, and I eat wheat brownies. This is how you know what you're dealing with. Judgment is not with them. Read. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. Read it Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Read. That put darkness for lights and light for darkness. That's what they've done in the Christian church. They flipped it. So now you come in here as a repentant Israelite, and you think I can remain in the midst of evil and still get the kingdom of heaven. It don't work that way. The Lord is looking for you to be honest. He's looking for you to be a real repenting person. Not somebody who on the surface everybody views as an Israelite and your fringes is fly and your head wrap is fly, but inside of you is Satan. Judgment's not in you. Because when somebody get high around you, you don't say, Yo, you getting high, you got to stop that around me. That's why y'all can't be around people, right? A lot of y'all, y'all can't be around people right now because when you go around them, they're going to be smoking, doing something evil. We're going to be like, yo, bro, you can't do that around me. 
You ain't right. You got sin on you. But some of y'all, y'all let the sin exist just like Kevin on stage. So what are you, a repentant Israelite or a Christian? Because a repentant Israelite would love their neighbor and say what? Yo, you in sin. The Bible said be sober. That ain't right. You ain't supposed to be doing that. They would know that about you. Therefore, they wouldn't even pull out the blunt in front of you and create a, a big scene. They wouldn't hit the they wouldn't, they wouldn't ask you, do you hit weed brownies? Some of y'all still get texts, yo, I got this for you. I got that for you. That's because the people you deal with know you ain't really repenting yet. You ain't really changed. They still hit you up on a Sabbath day, on your birthday. Happy birthday. Because they know you really ain't changed yet. Because there's something still in you that's flirting with that idea going back to it. Same thing with this dude. You could tell he ain't changed because what people do around him. Give me um, Psalm chapter 7 and verse 11. Watch what the Lord said. And make sure you got the, uh, the next one. Start in three minutes. Psalm. Ball, ball head scallywag. Go ahead. Psalm chapter 7 and verse 11. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. You see what the Lord said? He said, I'm angry with the wicked every single day. Every day that you live, I'm frustrated with them. It ain't no, it ain't no day where I, I'm dealing and I say, yo, I'm, I'm not upset at the sin they're in. I'm frustrated. And they playing games, saying things like I can smoke, right? Saying things like it's all right for me to hit a brownie because I don't smell like weed. That's what the video was about. It's okay for you to hit a brownie because you don't smell like weed. Woe to those that call evil good, right, and good evil. That's the mindset that many of us learned for 30, 20, 40 years in the church. Give me uh, Proverbs 1 and verse 21. Then I want the next video. And we got to be able to look at these examples and say, what's the difference between me and that video? Am I like Kevin on stage when, when evil's being done around me, I allow it? As a matter of fact, I found a shortcut to do the evil. I say things like, well, I ain't drunk. I'm just feeling a little bit. I didn't stare at her for that long, just a little bit. I didn't watch the whole video. I didn't lie, lie. I wasn't rebellious, rebellious. These are the type of things we got in our head, which ain't right with God. God looking for truth in us. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 21. She 22. Verse 22. How long, ye simple ones? Will ye love simplicity? The Lord asks us a question. How long are we going to love being simple? How long? How long are we going to say, don't smoke, but eat a weed brownie? And a lot of us, I heard y'all laughing. Y'all find that stuff comical. And the reason you do is because something is in you. Laughing is agreement. Right? Laughing is agreement, so we understand. So we'll laugh at things because inside of us, we kind of like, yo, I mean, it ain't that bad. But we got to get to a point where we see stuff like that and it bothers us. It makes us just as frustrated because the Lord said what? With that video, he's angry. That's how we start to change our spirit because that joke will be a joke. And then next thing we know, somebody got a pan full of weed brownies in here. A repentant Israelite hitting a, weed full, a pan full of weed brownies. Like, bro, you getting high the whole time? Yeah, I didn't know I couldn't get high. Then y'all didn't say nothing about it. Wait a second. The Bible say be sober. Okay, I might have heard that. Might have heard that. I don't smoke it, though. I, as a matter of fact, I just take it through oil. Not CBD, THC oil, but fine. I'm not high, high. Right, officer? <laughs> he said, hell no. Go ahead. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? The Lord said, how long are we going to be simple? Read. And the scorners delight in their scorning. That's what you're looking at, scorners, right? They delight in their scorning. Let me get the next video. There you go. Hit play. In ministry, and it is not going to be the regular, same schmegler. I don't do regular schmegler. Y'all know that. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. But I do God's business, and that's what I'm about. Hold on, pause it, pause it. See, this is what I'm saying. I'm going to get frustrated watching this video. She says she do God's business. Remember what the God, what the Lord sent the men to go do, right? He sent the men to go into all nations and teach the people. Now, she got up here and say, I do God's business. There's nobody that's going to stop her. Say, yo, I'm not, I'm not allowing you to start this church. I'm not coming. There's people that's going to go. Hit play. And um, this is crazy. I've been saying for like years and years and years I was going to do a church. But 
I'm just now like ready for real. I ain't gonna lie, I was scared because mm, I'm a little different, but I have learned that different is good. Different will draw different. And you know, that's what God wants. And like, I feel like if, so if I'm a light, right? And I walk in a room full of light, you can't see my light because the room's full of light. But if I'm a light and I walk in a room full of darkness, you're going to see that light and it's going to be very bright, right? So that's what I want to do. And starting a church, I just feel like any and everybody can come. It's, it's not like... And it's like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's not no morning church. It's not none of that. It's because, you know, we like to sleep in. No shade. <laughs> sleep is good. Look at God. But, oh, thank you. But, um, it's just, I mean, it ain't no big traditional churchy church mess. Ugh. I hate to say mess, but it's mess. And I just, mm -mm. I've had my share with that and I've had my church hurt. And I know there's so many people out there with church hurt. And God is still real and he is so good and he still loves us. And he wants us to like be everything that we can possibly imagine. Like we just got to allow it. We got to let God do it. So this is my thing. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you look like. I don't care if you a, you a, a honey, straight, We're going to seven gay, minutes. I'm giving trans, the people three minutes of torture. Baby, buddy. listen. God, we're all God's children, and he loves us all. I, I don't... I, I'm sick and tired of the... Lord, please give me the words to say. But I'm sick and tired of church people with all this judgment and all this crap. I'm sick and tired of it. Like, it's, I'm over it. Like, no, you can love God. Like, I'm I'm still going to sing my r and I'm still doing my shows. Baby, I'm still going to be at that city winery. No shade. Come and check in the out. But I'm saying, you know, I'm still... I'm singing about love. What, what, am I sinning? Oh, God. Play the, play the last question again. Play. This is amazing. The Lord can't set it up any better. Play the last thing she said. Play the last thing she said, like the last five seconds. Please, hit play. Look at what she says. But I'm saying, you know... I'm still, I'm singing about love. What, what, am I sinning? Yes, 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 you are. First Timothy chapter 2, give me that. Yes, you are. A whole lot. A whole damn lot. Am I sinning? Her angel is probably frustrated how much writing he got to do. Damn, bro, he trying to sub out right now. First Timothy. God, First Timothy chapter 2. Pray for our people, man. And people are going to go to the church. I think I had another part I wanted of that video, but whatever. Let's let's go. Event, what she's going to do in the video, she invites everybody that's gay, LGBTQ, women that don't want to follow rules, men that don't want to follow rules. But here's her first problem. First Timothy ch chapter 2, right? And what I want, verse 12. First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. Here we go. Start at verse 11. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. That's what the Bible says. If she believed the Bible, she was a woman of God, she would have read this and said, I'm not supposed to be teaching in no church. I'm supposed to learn quietly. Because when I open my mouth, I say things like, God wants me to walk in a room full of darkness and be the light. I'm doing the mission of God. And I'm still going to go down to the winery, check a nigga out. Read it again. Let the woman learn in silence. That's why God said this. If she would have shut up. I Look, I didn't know Kiki Wyatt. See, I started researching when she opened her mouth. She got like 11 or 12 kids. 
Oh, yeah, get real. This ain't the slander, huh? And not by the same father. You're right, sis. She is a rolling stone. That's your learning silence. That's what the Bible say. In order for her to save herself, the best thing for her to do is to be quiet. Read it again. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Read. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. The Lord said the best thing for her to do is to be quiet. But somehow, she picked up the Bible and said, I'm going to go teach a church. I'm a light. What she is is she's darkness. She's, one of the, again, one of these Christians that's going to spread evil in the earth. Our job, read Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Our job, understanding this as repentant Israelites, is to save the people that are in darkness. That's what we got to be. We got to be that example of the light. We can't be like Kiki White, bald-headed, 11 kids, uh, inviting LGBTQ to the church, talking about I'm a light. Hell no, you ain't no light. You ain't no damn light. You ain't a candle. Huh? You ain't a flickering light. You ain't a light of no sort. You ain't a light her. You're nothing until you repent. Isaiah 61 and 1. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. Freedom. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Read. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to, pro to, pro to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Our responsibility is to free those that are bound by Satan. The only way we could do that is by being an example of what that repentance looks like. Give me Matthew 4 and verse 17. I'm getting ready to wrap up, y'all. I know some of y'all got to go and feed the dogs. Some of y'all got to watch Kiki Wyatt sermons. You got to figure out whether you're a repentant Israelite, right, or if you're a congregating Christian. You got to make that determination. But we can see today there's a difference. Matthew 4 and verse 17. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord's purpose was for us to repent and change, not to come as we are, not to invite people to stay the same. The goal was you must change your behavior. Now, there was compassion in that at times. There was a fire in that at times. But all of it led back to the fact that the Lord sent these men out on a mission knowing judgment was going to happen on earth. There's a destruction coming on the earth. And if we don't have that in our mind, we won't change. Psalm 51 and verse 3. If we don't have that in our mind, we will not keep it real. What I, keep it real. What I realize about California is there's this Hollywood spirit out here. I'm from New York originally. There's a very Hollywood pretend you're, you're dealing with, not dealing with issues, and, and walk around and be fake spirit in this place. Let's keep the image of everything's all right. And that ain't godly. That's the mindset of a congregating Christian. A Christian comes and they pretend everything's all right. But everybody in their house is, is disagreeing with them, fighting with them. They really need help. But as long as they can hold together on the surface, they think they're godly. But that's not what the Lord is looking for. He's looking for this. Psalms 51 and verse 3. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 3. Freedom. For I acknowledge my transgression. We got to first start by acknowledging that we have sin. Everybody in here got sin. I don't care who you are. From me down, everybody in here, from the man on the, in the, in the SCB, everybody dealing with sin. You know why? Because the Lord said, I'm going to put evil thoughts in your head. I'm going to do that. And the Lord said, if you think of adultery, if you think of stealing, what that means is you're on the path to sin. So we all fight in sin. Our thoughts are sin with God. If we, if we continue to entertain them, we will lead to doing the sin physically. So everybody's battling. So if anybody says they're not, that's how you know you're dealing with Satan. So when he's talking about repentance, he said, change your thoughts. Read. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. The Lord is seeing our sin. Go ahead. Against thee, thee only have I sinned. You only sin against God when you do something wrong. When you allow that thought to manifest and you act it out, you sin it against God. And the judgment we read about in the beginning of this class, seeing that the earth is going to be dissolved and everything in it, what man of person ought you to be? Read. And done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest uh -huh. and be clear when thou judgest. Read. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. When I came out of the womb, there was sin attached to me. This flesh I'm in has sin attached to it. Your body and your mind is designed to sin, and the laws are designed to fight against that nature. Go ahead. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Read. Here's the point, verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. The Lord desires truth inside of us. 
He wants our thought, our every action to be truth. Give me truth real quick. This is what he wants in us. But the Christian church don't teach you truth. They teach you lie after lie after lie. I'm still going to go down to the city winery, hit the weed brownie. Uh, I'm going to preach the real Jesus, the one that would piss the church off. Meanwhile, everybody in there clapping and happy. That ain't the real Jesus. The real Jesus say, sister, you got the devil on you. The real Jesus say, brother, you effeminate. That's the real Jesus. The real Jesus was put on a cross and killed for telling people to repent. After he healed Knuckles, they said, kill him. I don't want to hear that no more. He told me what to do. He healed me. He healed me. Kill him now. I ain't got no purpose for him. Read that. Psalm chapter 119 and verse 142. Read it out. Thy righteousness has an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. We need the laws of God in us. That's what we need. If that truth ain't in us, the Lord don't give a damn how much you show up physically with fringes on. He's looking. Give me Psalm 51 and 6. Read it again. He so, Psalm chapter 51 and verse 6. Read it Behold, out. thou desirest truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part that shall make me to know wisdom. Matthew 18 and verse 4 real quick. Start at verse 3. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's the message Christ pushing. That's the same message we push here in the IUIC. Is that you got to become like this little child and change. A kid accepts information. You can guide and mentor a child. But a lot of us come in and say things like, we grown-ass men, we grown-ass women. You're not. You're a grown idiot. I'm just going to keep it real with you. Because you couldn't avoid death. Before you got here, you was not going to avoid death. You was going to be hitting the weed brownie, going to Kiki Wyatt Church, hitting the city winery, thinking you were going to be saved by God. So in order for us to change, we got to be like that little kid who accepts information, who says, maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe for 40 years of my life, 50 years of my life, 60 years of my life, I've been doing it wrong. And now I need a new way to do it right. That's why the Lord grabbed a little child and showed him to the apostles and said, unless you become like this child who I can tell come over here and they'll come, then you ain't getting the kingdom of heaven. Read verse 4. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Give me 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. I'm almost done. Second Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 34. Read it out. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. The Lord said if you can stop yourself from thinking the way you think and push your thoughts down and add this Bible in, put that truth in your inward part, then you'll be saved. You'll be saved from that fire. Because what people think is the fire we're talking about is the judgment. That's just the start. The fire we started the class off with is just the start of the judgment. That's the physical part. And then you get to burn for a thousand years with the Lord. But we haven't been taught that in Christian. We ain't even been taught the carnal aspect of how we're going to die, let alone the spiritual part of it. So we lack fear of God, and we won't subdue our thoughts because of that. Give me Matthew 18 and verse 15. Another thing that's different from a Christian, from a Christian congregant and a repentant Israelite is that this truth requires you to have real relationships. A lot of y'all still fake with each other. Y'all talk to each other every day. You in all type of sin. Nobody know what you're dealing with. You don't ask nobody what they're dealing with because you don't understand what we're together for. The purpose of us all coming together is so that when, when that judgment day comes, we can look to our brother to our left, our brother to our right, and my responsibility is to save off the society of soul. My responsibility is to save Naquan's soul. Naquan's responsibility to me is to save my soul. Officer society's responsibility to me is to save my soul. How are they going to do that if they don't judge me? How are they going to do that if they don't call me out when I'm doing things wrong? That's why the Lord wrote this in here, Matthew 18 and 15. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15. Freedom. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. If you talk to your brother and they hear the sin that you've done against them, the wrong, you have gained a brother. You only have real brothers and sisters in the world because the people that you was around, it was fake as hell. They actually waited for the opportunity to talk against you. They waited to tell somebody your business. So now you don't have the ability to go and be real. But the Lord is telling you, in order to come in here and be a repentant Israelite, this is the stuff you need to apply. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. You got to have a mindset to build with your brother and sister. Not to, usurp, not to be greater than them. 
for the sake of saying you're greater than them or do more than them and talk about how you do more. The goal is for us all to get the kingdom of heaven together, that none of us die, no child left behind. But that's going to take us looking at each other as brother and sister and then saying, yo, you off right here. You got to fix yourself. And the people that hate you, you're going to find out who a Christian congregant is in here because you're going to correct them and they're going to catch your attitude. They're going to say, I don't want to deal with you. They're going to fade back from you. When people fade back, I'm going to tell you a secret. When people fade back from you and it's truth, you're doing the right thing. When everybody ain't around you, right, and everybody, if everybody walk up on you and give you a hug every time they see you and say, oh, man, you're the greatest sister, you're the greatest brother, you got the devil on you. I'm telling you because some, all of us is dealing with stuff. So when you start correcting brothers, the ones who really got Satan on them, they're going to stand over there in the corner when they see you. You're going to look across the room, and you're going to look, and they're going to be in the corner like, you're like, damn, this brother got Satan on him. He didn't come say shalom, right? He didn't salute me. He hasn't called me in three months. Why not? That's Romans 13 and 8. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 13 and verse 8. Read it out. Owe no man anything. I don't want to owe anyone anything on the earth. Here's how I'm going to make sure of that. I'm going to apply the scriptures. Watch. But to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. If you love your brother like you love yourself, you fulfill the law. Here's how. Read. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. The Lord wasn't asking this. It's a commandment. He said, gather yourselves together. Read it again. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. The Lord said in the last days, he commands us to gather together. He said we are a nation not desired. Read that for, top part one more time. Gather yourselves together. Wait a second. You. You sitting on the couch. You're sitting at home. The end time's passing you by. And you ain't been to the school yet. Come on now, dog. You ain't here, Boozy. What Boozy just said? Come on, man. Come on, man. It's time for you to get down here, man. It's a shame, bro. What the hell? Come on, man. Oh, my God. No way. Yeah, yeah. Look, come down to the school, 7254 University Avenue, La Mesa, California. Come keep God's commandments. What you waiting on? And if you're looking for a school in your area, visit israelunite.org slash contact us and find the school closest to you. Shalom. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You're not going to commit adultery. And if your brother's committing adultery, you're going to hold him accountable. Read. Thou shalt not kill. If you kill him, you're going to stop and you're going to hold a brother next to you uh, uh, to a standard where you say you're not killing no more. Hatred is also murder. That's killing in the eyes of God. Read. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. The Lord said if you're a thief, if you're taking pens from your job, you're going to stop. You're going to say, sister, where you got that pen? You stole another one? Take it back to your job. Stop bringing paper up here that you stole from the Navy. Damn. Come on, stop it. We don't steal. Read. Thou shalt not Damn, steal. Bro. Pissing me off with that paper. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Read. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. All right, give me John 9 and 22 real quick. I'm getting one more. We getting, uh, getting two more. We out of here. John chapter 9 and verse 22. These words spake his parents, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. What we got to understand is in the time of Christ, just like today, if you were in the church carrying yourself as a repentant Israelite, they'd kick you behind out. You wouldn't be able to exist with them. Why? Because the, the Bible says that there's going to be good set against evil. So there should be a difference between you and a Christian. It should feel uncomfortable because you know sin is in the midst and you're going to say something. Because you love your brother, you love your sister, you're not just going to lie with the right. Now I'm not saying just go around and be annoying. You look up, every time you come around, well, you smoke it. Up, oh, you sin. Up, oh, you lie. You ain't supposed to do that. But they should know you have a standard, and the standard is different than theirs. And either they're gonna conform to that, or they're gonna get away from you. That's what's happening here. John nine and twenty two. John chapter nine and verse twenty two. These words spake his parents because they had they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ. He should be put out of the synagogue. And that's the same thing that's going to happen these last days. We're going to be persecuted. Why? Because there's a difference between us, the repentant Israelite, and the congregating Christian. The congregating Christian looks at you as judgmental. 
looks at you as holier than thou. But they go to church every Sunday and sin, and nobody's correcting them. Nobody's holding them accountable to what they're doing wrong. And for that, they're going to die. That's what the Bible said. We read it over and over again. They're going to die. Our responsibility is for the people that want to repent and get their mind rights to be the exact opposite, to be the exact opposite of what's going on in the church. This is a real thing that y'all in. This ain't the Christian church where you come here, you just sit here, you have no regard for what the mission is or what you should be doing or how you play a part in it. Everyone's here to do something towards the mission of waking up the 12 tribes of Israel. But the Christian church, you can sit on the sidelines, come and participate if you want. If you don't want to participate, don't participate. There's a difference here. Every man and woman that's here understands what the mission is and what they need to be doing towards it. Give me Revela uh, Matthew 7, verse 21. I said I had two more, right? Yes, sir. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 and 16. Let me see that one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We got to kill off who we used to be. What I told a brother this weekend is some of y'all, right, your name in the world might have been Timothy or, 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 or Sarah, right, in the world. Now you come in here, you Rebecca, right? You are, uh, 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 you are Moses. There got to be a difference between who those people were. The carnal person that you used to be and that name and the thoughts that was attached to that person, you should be able to look back and say, I'm nothing like Sarah was. I'm nothing like Timothy was. I'm Moses now. Because what? Your actions and your thought processes change. That's what it means by the outward man is perishing. You dying every day, you getting older. But inwardly, you becoming something different. Your thoughts are different. Your actions are different as a result of it. Your character is different. And what's going to show is that you're a repentant Israelite. It's going to show that you're not just a congregating Christian. You ain't going to have to walk everybody and tell everybody, yeah, I'm an Israelite. I wear fringes. Con, con, con. I don't celebrate birthdays. You ain't going to have to say that. When you speak and you open your mouth, they're going to say, damn, something's different about him. When you walk in a room and you carry yourself as a sister, they're going to say, dang, she dressed different. She talked different. She has a different demeanor than all of us. All of us got the devil on us. They're going to know. And you're going to get persecuted for that. Watch what it says. Go ahead. Verse 17. For our light affliction which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Read. While we look not at the things which are seen. Because we ain't focused on the big, glorious Christian church, the pastor's car, all the monetary things in the earth. What we're looking at is this. Read. But at the things which are not seen. The spirit that's in us. That's what's not seen. That's the difference between a, rest, a repenting Israelite and a Christian congregant. A Christian congregant is work focused on the outside. The external things. They're not worried about what's in a man or a woman's spirit. If you repent, that's where your mind's going to start to change towards. Go ahead. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Give me um, Revelation chapter 7. They give me verse 3. I'll end it here. Revelation chapter 7. So what, what, the, what the goal of a repentant Israelite is, is to wake up the 144,000 and bring the destruction upon the earth. That's what you're here for. You here so that you can repent and that you can support the men if you're a sister or if you're a man coming in here to learn and go teach your people so we can get the mission accomplished. The apostles were on a mission. They weren't just holding this Bible so they could make money, profit, have comfort in their life, bringing people that was evil. There was a goal with it. They wanted the destruction to come. That's why they asked the Lord, are you going to destroy it at this time? So now the Lord is waiting on us. He said, I'm going to bring destruction, but you got to do this first. Revelation 7 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3. Read it saying, up. hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. When he says seal, give me Isaiah 8, 16 real quick. Let me come back to that. He says, hurt not the earth until you have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. So what the Lord is waiting on is for the Israelites, the 144,000 men that's going to rule on the earth to be sealed. This is what seal means. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. They must be taught the law. The law, the law must be sealed in their mind. So that's how you know the Christian church is BS. They're not teaching the law, so therefore nobody's going to get sealed coming up out of there. But the Israelites understand we're on a mission. Get, go back to Revelation 7 and verse 3. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3 saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees. Don't destroy the earth with nuclear fire until what? Till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. When they learn the laws of God in their forehead and into the standard of perfection that the Lord is looking for, the earth is going to be destroyed. 
You want a time clock to get right. That's the difference between a repentant Israelite and a congregating Christian. A repentant Israelite understands I'm on a timeline. And every time you see these prophecies coming to pass, time is running out. The opportunity for me to repent is running out. So I got to get right. The Christian is comfortable. They say, I don't got no mission. I just go to church every Sunday. It is what it is. Maybe I make it to the kingdom of heaven. Maybe I don't. But I'll gossip till I die. We all going to die. There's a difference. There's a big difference. And when you read the Bible, that's what y'all got to understand. Y'all not here to just sit down and be idle and not play a part in this. You're here so that you can repent and get the next person to repent so we can go on home. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. All right. With that, I'm going to say shalom. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.